Our reporters are out and about bringing you the latest on today's top stories. I am joined by Slindelo Masigani in Pretoria, Desin Thathia is in Durban, and Heidi Jokos is here in Johannesburg. All right, Slindelo, let me start with you. An interesting development concerning the Sendomio murder trial, of course, this morning. We understand the state may be funding the accused legal fees. Uh, what happened? And can you just explain to us uh, what Judge uh, Rata Mokhwateng has, uh, has said in terms of beginning this trial officially? Well, from what we understand, of course, that uh, the Senzo Miwa murder trial is officially starting de novo, meaning a new, meaning a fresh. So all that we saw transpiring over the past year is basically null and void. It's as if it did not happen. And we have a new judge who's really cracking the whip on ensuring that this trial moves as speedily as possible moving forward. A lot of the administrative issues that need to be taken care of, um, he has ordered that much of it needs to to take place today, such as a pre-trial conference, as well as a duty care forms that need to be filled out by the lawyers representing the accused for legal aid to cover the costs of uh, their um, their presence in court and representing, of course, the accused. From what we understand, that it has been raised that um, it's unfair or prejudicial on the accused um, to be forced or to be made to pay uh, for their legal fees moving forward given the fact that the trial is now starting afresh and there is a process um, that allows for private attorneys to apply to legal aid to have uh, at least some of the costs covered in terms of representing the accused. So we understand that an order has been made to ensure that a legal aid representative makes their way to court so that these forms can be filled out and processed as soon as possible. And of course, like I said, a pre-trial conference taking place this afternoon between the defense as well as the state. And tomorrow we are expecting to proceed with the trial with the accused officially um, giving their pleas uh, before the new judge. So at this point, uh, it does seem as though Judge Rata Mokhwateng um, is um, giving this trial every opportunity in order to ensure that there are no more delays and that we proceed as soon as possible. Let's take a listen. Where are the offices of the legal aid board? I understand Mr. Mnisi knows line. It's ten, I'm told my lord, it's 10 minutes away from here. It's yeah, here. Why can't I make an order that Mr. Mujutu should come here? So that's because this is an exceptional matter in the sense that uh, a lot of time, I'm told, has been dis mm. dispensed. Mm. We'll appreciate that. He's 10 minutes away. Yeah. He can come to court and we can tell him that all of you want legal aid assistance. We'll appreciate that, my lord. I've given the contact number <coughs> for Mr. Majuto to the registrar of the court, my lord. So what should we do? We call Mr. Majuto to come here. Why is you are ha having a press a pre-trial conference. Pre conference. Pre conference? As the court business. <laughs> then that makes sense. Mr. Baloui, what's your view? That's in order, my lord. It mm, looks like this trial finally uh, has a judge that will uh, make things move a bit more forward much quicker. Desen, let me come to you. The fraud and corruption trial against former Eteguni Mayor Zandi Dokumede and 21 others has resumed, of course, in the Durban High Court today. I understand that the cross-examination of the state's second witness, Sean Hitler, is continuing. What has he said so far? That's right, Maseko. In fact, Sean Hitler took the stand during the last session and he's now continuing with that cross-examination. So advocate Jimmy House is busy with that. I think uh, I'll also point out that, you know, we've, we've seen the trajectory that the cross-examination has taken up until this point. And it shows that the defense is really trying to find fault with the process of the appointment of the forensic investigation company that was hired by the CIIU, that's the city's integrity and investigation unit. So that has continued today. And one of the, the, the matters that was raised in court was raised by advocate Jimmy House, talking about how the guidelines for the CIIU indicate that there should be at least three service providers that are approached when there is a possible investigation. So just to recap, what has happened here was that a complaint had landed up with the city's own internal investigation team. 
once that assessment was done by by that team which includes Sean Hitler which is on the stand now a decision was then made to appoint an external forensic investigation company to pick up that investigation so Advocate Jimmy House saying that that process was not followed because one particular company, IFS, was approached directly, whereas the guidelines claim that there should be three companies. But in, in response, Sean Hitler has said that there was a reason for that, in that there is no specific guideline to say that each and every investigation has to go through those three bidders. And secondly, there was a common link. So one of the companies that is now implicated in this matter was also part of an, an investigation that was already on the that was already being dealt with rather by IFS and that was the reasoning so that's how they ended up with that investigation but this has been a continuation as I said this has been a matter that has raised previously the appointment of IFS as the team that is investigating IFS is one of about 16 or 17 that's on a panel that was already approved by the municipality to handle these particular investigations so certainly progress in the case is very slow as they try to unpack these details at this point it is still very technical and it's there's still a long way to go as we see other witnesses that will eventually take the stand mm. all right uh, let's go to Heidi Jokos who was in yet another court so a lot of what's happening today has to do with trials and court appearances etc Heidi you were at the Babita Diokaran murder trial uh, this of course being in the High Court in Johannesburg today uh, but we already kind of knew that nothing uh, significant would happen today just very quickly Heidi because I have to take the viewer to another court in Bumalanga uh, what was the family's reaction to the slow start yet again yes so we do understand that trial was expected to commence today six stand accused of of um, assassinating Babita Diokaran. She was a chief director in the Department of Health here in Gauteng. She was investigating um, uh, corruption and uh, tenders uh, at the Tembisa Hospital. Uh, we do understand that uh, this happened in August of 2021, Masejo, and we are almost in August 2023, and trial has still not commenced. We do know that one of the accused legal team was unavailable today due to ill health. We do understand that the matter will be back in court in early August hopefully for um, for uh, for the trial to actually begin but the family of course not very happy not satisfied at all with the fact that there's uh, delay after delay and I think what's even more alarming is the fact that we still do not know who the mastermind is behind uh, the order to kill Babita Diokaran as much as six men have been arrested and are, uh, accused of um, of killing her we don't know who's the mastermind behind all of this so uh, it's yet another delay. Uh, unfortunately, there's nothing that the court can do if the legal teams aren't ready, but uh, this is the situation. Let's perhaps listen to what the family told us yesterday. Feeling betrayed. You know, we are more hurt and broken, but I think Babita has been betrayed here because what she fought for what she exposed our hope is that this is not swept under the carpet and uh, you know covered up because then she would have died in vain all right that was your enca lunchtime update from all angles with reporters heidi jokos desin thatia and slindelo masigani thank you team let's leave it there for now